I saw a lot of movies last year. I saw a lot of good movies, and I saw a lot of movies with conservative values. Uh, and I watch a lot of TV, and I saw a lot of TV shows with conservative values. So it confuses me when um, I saw a response to the Oscars ceremony uh, floating around on YouTube. Uh, it was it was part one of a of a two part thing, I think. Uh, that the PJ TV did with uh, Bill Whittle was was the host, and they had uh, uh, Andrew Clavin, and I can't remember who the other guy is. Roger L. Simon. Roger L. Simon. I'm sorry. I was. I have. I have my. I have my conservative people confused. Uh, Roger L. Simon and and Clavin and Simon are both screenwriters. Uh, so you know they've 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 actually been in the business in Hollywood. And what what happened was what they did was they they had they had sort of a alternative awards ceremony thing called the Ronnies named after Ronald Reagan. I I I had a hard time watching it. It was it was a long video. I I, I did watch it though. And the thing that really confused me and, and disappointed me, I have to say, was the fact that instead of talking about the current culture and the current movies that are uh, that are out and the current TV shows because I did delve into TV a little bit current actors current actresses they talked about stuff that happened you know 40 years before I was born 50 years before I was born 60 years before I was born like ridiculously long ago not anything that was recent and they were talking about this as a conservative alternative, uh, giving awards for conservative actor and conservative movie. And I, I don't know. The, the thing that I, I felt from it was that do we really want to be shedding ourselves off from the culture when so much of the culture is, is conservative in itself? Why are we going back and rewarding things for its conservative value instead of just looking at what we currently have saying that it's good or bad based on its merits, and then point out the conservatism that is inherent or not. I mean, to me, I think I think that's what, what would be effective and what would be helpful because it would give people an idea of, of what was actually going on currently. Okay, so you've been all nice about this, and I appreciate that because the last time we got into it with anything about Bill Whittle, it was a mess. Um... So, I, I, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to fire a salvo here, and this is WW2, because I'm more than disappointed. I'm angry. Here is Bill Whittle, who gets on stages and, and videos all across the country and all over the internet, and talks about how we need to be relevant in the culture. And he, we, he talks about how we need to... Uh, let conservatives go out there and make good content and, and support that sort of thing. And here's Andrew Claven, who, as you pointed out earlier today, has a series on YouTube called Claven on the Culture. And here's Roger L. Simon, who's created PJ Media, PJ TV. He's, he's been working in this thing. And all three of these guys have, have current, current work talking about the culture. And they went back for the best conservative movie to what? Tell them. Well, I mean, it's it's not like it's a bad movie. I love the movie to I'm, death. There's nothing wrong with the movie. But Mr. Smith Goes to Washington was was made kind of a long time ago. I mean, I think we can all agree that Mr. Smith Goes to Washington was, you know, it was it, it was a, it was kind of far back. It was and TV. Was it. And TV. Yeah. Um. Guys, so, I'm going to interrupt with a little bit of extra bad news, just in case you hadn't followed through the links on this YouTube video. It goes to the PJTV store. It's a red state, red carpet, conservatives in cinema. It's a five-part series that you can buy for $12.99. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not... If, if, if the, the YouTube video was what... what is indicative That's of the rest of the series. their promotion for it. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not interested. But what I was going to say about the television series, so here's what they were. They had 24, which is sort of recent. I mean, it's it, there, there was a 24 series on TV last year. So we're good, we're good. 
Duck Dynasty, which again, I mean, we're, we're pushing it because it's Duck Dynasty. It's It's been in the culture for a while now, and we've, we've seen it. We kind of all got the picture. But yeah, all right, it's on TV right now. Star Trek, the original series. Star Trek, the original series. N- no. Sorry, guys. Uh, two, two problems. Number one, by the way, I'm a Trekkie. I'm an enormous Trekkie. Number one, that was made before the dinosaur. And number two, it was made by a rabid socialist. So I don't understand their reasoning for conservative oh, whatever. Oh, let him finish. Yeah, because if you thought that was bad, then the last one was the Andy Griffith show, <laughs> which if anyone knows anything about Andy Griffith, well... Yeah, he's kind of kind of a rabid socialist himself. So, I mean, it was it a show that had good values? Yeah, for sure. It was it was great, and I I love the show. But guys, I I hate to tell you this. No, no, stop, 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 stop. Because we're gonna have to pay them. We're gonna have to pay them. We can't do that. We don't want to do that. Ay, 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 that's the last thing I want to do. I have to pay the estate of Andy Griffith, Griffith money. No, um, it, it's it's kind of been a while, guys, and there are shows on currently. I mean, Leslie, we can talk about, we, we, could, we could right now, we could spend the rest of the show talking about how awesome Blue Bloods is, right? Yes, absolutely. I watch it every week. There it are quite a few, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I don't watch conservative TV shows. I watch good TV shows that I enjoy that provide value in my life. I don't ghettoize my TV shows or anything by limiting it and requiring that people brand themselves something in order to watch it because that limits your audience. And here's, again, my point about why this is so heinous. These guys know better and they did this. And they called them the Ronnies as though this was some... You know, they were preaching to a very small choir of people who have indeed walled themselves off, who have sequestered themselves in conservative culture, in past culture, in nostalgia culture. There is nothing wrong with liking those things. They are not indeed relevant to anything going on today in terms of connecting with people and using the culture to talk about your values and things. If you have to go that far back and you can't find in all sorts of good, whether it's political or not, fair that's on television or in movies right now, and you can't go find conservative themes, you suck and you need to stop. And I'm just saying it to all three of them. Stop it. Stop it now. Go home and think about what you did. I just think it's an incredibly lost opportunity because if people, hypothetically, let's say people can see you know, the Oscars and then they can see a conservative version of an award show. And on the conservative one, you look only at quality, no preaching. You might say, now this, has a, this did have a neat message that we like, but you don't preach. You don't, you don't have people going off on you know, how evil America is. And I think people would find that refreshing. So instead you put out something that people find laughable by, I haven't seen this, but by what you're saying. And so what a lost opportunity. It is, it's, people like it when they hear a conservative not ranting, but, but just um, looking at the quality of something and being what, less divisive. What they could have done with this is go through all of the nominees that were that were there in terms of best picture and things like that. They could have gone through that list and found, you know, highlighted what the themes were, told you what it was about, and told you where it's conservatively themed or if it isn't at all, and how they did comparably, say, at the box office, and whether one has been out longer and that's why it's earned more money or the other one just came out, or whether people flocked to one and the reviews for one or, you know, were better than others. Isn't it sad? Those guys have a budget. They have a studio. I have seen that studio. I have been there to PJTV. I have seen that stuff. They have all of this, all these resources, all those brains in entertainment. They are in freaking California, in Los Angeles, where they have access to all sorts of people. And it's 
Andy Pate and Corey of the Party of Choice writing conservative framed movie reviews to let people know about the quality and the messaging. And it's us on the refinery sitting around talking about what people should be doing and looking for conservative themes in their entertainment so that they can engage culturally with other people. We don't have those resources. We don't have that money. We don't have that focus or those assets. And shame on them. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I have, I have, I am done talking about it. You guys go on, but I'm, I'm too mad to speak. I'm just, I'm seriously angry. What, what bothers me, and I think what, what has got Felicia so upset about this, is the main thing about what PJ TV has done with this episode, is they've squandered so many resources. They've been a very bad steward of conservative time, money, and treasure. Um, they've wasted our time in making us talk about it, and anybody who watched it, that's time that they didn't spend growing the conservative movement. And the amount of money that those individuals and everybody who, who was involved in putting it together, that's money that isn't going into growing the conservative movement. It's huge missed opportunity. The opportunity cost of that, because we know that there are blogs that don't get any funding and that die because the guy needs to spend money, he spend his time making money. If a couple thousand, that couple thousand dollars that PJTV spent on that, they had sent it to some poor blogger that's just about to quit because he doesn't have any money, they could have done a hell of a lot more benefit for the conservative movement. I agree. And I, and I see this in conversation from last year after CPAC, the disappointment that you guys felt because it was an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money spent in a big uh, big conference and an awful lot of people together, so much opportunity, but there was no training of the people. There was nothing really of lasting value that w that anybody walked away with it. And there's just so much churn going on in the conservative movement that isn't getting things done. And we're actually working against ourselves on this kind of thing. This was not a race in which there was an unknown Democrat that was thrown in there to you know hold the place this was the former communications director of the Democrat Party of Louisiana and she wouldn't even put D after her name in order to run right and that's why the GOP chairman says that's a complete collapse of the party in the state I mean they're just done Louisiana Democrats are done so done bye-bye see ya